starting with verse 17. Before we go there, I just want to know, is there any is there anybody in the house that is a banker or an investment partner or something like that? Anybody? Nancy's a banker. Are you a banker, Nancy? Bob said you was an anchor. Because I'm trying to find out if, if in this world that we live in, if there's a way that we can invest everything that we have in one, one central bank account and then get double of a profit out of it. Is, is there something that we can do in this world? There's something that we can invest everything in and get a double portion back, like, like immediate return. Because if there is, I want to find it. I got a $100 bill right here. I just want to invest in that. I want to give that. Someone gave me this this morning. Thank you. I keep one of these in my wallet to give out to whoever God says to give it to. I always have one in my wallet I've given out. I, don't, I can't even count how many I've given out of these $100 bills. And most of them come from other people that just hand them to me. And I've been on airplanes and they've handed them to me. I've been in, in conferences and they've come up from other countries and just handed me a $100 bill out of the blue. And I'm just grateful that, that, that God has done that. I've always wanted a wallet that's got a $100 bill in it. And every time I pull it out, there's another one there so I can just buy things. And I've always prayed for a wallet like that. And now I have a wallet that's got a $100 bill. When I pull it out, listen, when I pull it out and give to someone and bless them with it, God always puts it on someone's heart to give me another one. It's been like that for about three years now. So I'm just grateful. So if the Lord puts it on your heart to give me a $100 bill, you better give it. Because he wants you to. And know that I'm not going to use it for myself. I'm going to use it for the kingdom to minister to the kingdom. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 10. Now he was going out on the road, Jesus, and one came running and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? For no one is good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments, and you all know the commandments too. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Let me read that one again. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered him, he said, teacher, all these things I have done from my youth up. What a testimony that is, that this young man from his youth up has done all these things, has followed the law, because then it was law, and now it's Jesus. And Jesus said to him, he looked at him with love. Listen, he looks at us with love and compassion. He looked at him with love, and he said, you lack one thing. You lack one thing. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. And you will have treasures in heaven. And then come and take up your cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around to his disciples, and he made a statement here. He said, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them with another statement, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. Verse 26. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but with God, 
but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. And Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, listen, this is where the, this is where the twofold comes in. Double portion of our blessing of being sold out to Jesus. Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house, listen, or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last will be first what an awesome scripture to tell us if we invest everything that we have everything that we have accumulated into Jesus the return is going to be twofold. We're going to receive it here and we're going to receive it there. Last week, my wife spoke and she talked about Hannah wanting a child. Hannah prayed for this child. She couldn't have kids. Sometimes that's the way it is. But she couldn't have kids and, and so she prayed, God, I want a son. And she went to the temple and she was praying and she said God I want a son and she was praying under her breath to Eli saw her and he said to her woman stop drinking put the alcohol away and she said no sir I'm not drinking I haven't even drinking any wine or any strong drink I'm praying that God would answer my prayer Sarah was 90 and God answered her prayer Never give up on your hopes and your dreams for what God has for you. And she prayed, and what happened was God gave her a son, and th she made a vow to God. She said, if you give me a son, listen, we've got to be willing to give everything to him, regardless of what it is. If you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Everything that you have come from God. Your kids, everything your dreams, your ambitions. If we give all of that to him, the one who knows how to invest, he's going to give you the best return on your investment. So the baby was born and she gave him to God. And Samuel become a great kingdom investment and an investment here in this earth. Two weeks ago, we talked about being sold out. We talked about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Three wonderful men. And how the Nebuchadnezzar had put out a decree in the, in the land and said that when the music plays the idol that I made from the material that God created, I want you to bow down and worship. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, no, we will not bow down. And so they didn't bow down. And all the, the, the ones who were looking around, trying to make accusations against them, trying to find fault in them, like so many people do, trying to find fault in one another so they can bring it to a higher court and see if they can be judged. Well, listen, this is what happened. They went and told them, you're supposed to do this. And they said, we're not going to do it. So they took him before Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar said to him, why are you not doing this? And he said, we're not going to do this. He said, I'm going to give you one more chance. The enemy is always going to give you one more chance. Sell out to God. And if you don't like it, the enemy will always give you another chance, another way. But they said it doesn't matter. And the king and Nebuchadnezzar pl played the music again, gave them another chance. And they said it don't matter. Our God is going to deliver us. And even if he don't, even if your dreams and ambitions don't get answered, even if your prayers don't get answered the way that you want, 
the investor knows how to invest everything to give you the best return on the investment if you give him everything everything I mean everything and they did they sold out so he was mad at their staying and mad because they wouldn't serve. Listen, we're going to get to the benefit. And what happened was he, he heated the fire up seven times hotter than it, than it was before. And he took those three men and he, and he threw them in the fire. And the guys that threw them in the fire burn up because the fire was so hot. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were standing in the fire. They weren't being burnt. Their hair on their head wasn't being singed. They didn't even smell like smoke. But there was someone in the, in the fire with them. Jesus was with them. Jesus is always going to be with you. No matter the outcome of your situation, he's always going to be with you. He's always going to be the one in the fire standing with you. When you're going through a trial and a tribulation, Jesus is there. You might not like the outcome of what God is doing, but know that the one who is bringing the outcome or because of the circumstances, the God of heaven, the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the one you've invested everything into knows best. And he's going to give the best outcome according to his will and his way. So what happened? Nebuchadnezzar called him for it. Hey, guys, what's going on? Why are you guys not burning up? So what happened was, this is their earthly benefit. There was a new decree made that said anyone that does not serve Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's God, because he's a God that delivers, because they said he would deliver. He would free them, even if he didn't, even if it wasn't answered. Still, he was serve. So I can't imagine what their heavenly reward is going to be like because of their earthly reward being so awesome and great. And then we talked about Esther. Esther was a solid, strong young woman. And she loved her people so much to the point that she was willing to go stand in front of a king that could take her life. Because when you stood before a king in those days and you wasn't announced or you wasn't called to be there, you could have your life taken. And her family was telling her, no, don't do this because they can take your life. And she said, if I die, I die. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to go to heaven. I'm still going to meet my maker. It doesn't matter. He knows best for me. And I have to invest because I'm the one that has the connections. Sometimes you're the one that has the connection that God has for you. And you can connect to the right people to make the things happen because of the position that God has put you in. So she's put in this position, and she said, I have to be the one to do this. I have to be the one to see my people free. And what she did, and she stood up to the king, and she come in, and I'm sure she bowed low. And he put a sepulcher out for her to touch. And check this out. He said, what do you want? I will give you up to half the kingdom. What do you want? She didn't want that. Some of us would take that. I'll take half the kingdom, and I'll take this. She didn't ask for that. She, she wanted her people to be free. And so the whole story blew up, and he understood. And the enemy that was trying to devise a scheme against her, it happened to him. The enemy will be destroyed when Jesus is number one. The enemy has to be destroyed when Jesus is number one in your life. When you are sold all the way out to him, the enemy will be destroyed. Yes, there will be trials and there will be tribulations along with all the receiving that you get. But the enemy has no power because the only power that he has is the power that you've given him. That's the only power that he can have. So what happened? The enemy was destroyed. Her family was restored. A nation was saved. The lives of a nation was saved. All because of one woman. One powerful woman. Women never 
never think that you're not powerless. Women, you are. Men, you're powerful. Raise your sons and daughters to be powerful. But give them to God. Give your prayers to God. Give everything that you have to God. Let him give back to you what he feels like you need to have. I talked about I'm not a banker and I don't know how to invest. But I have invested in Jesus. I've sold out to him. He has my all. It doesn't matter. He has everything. I've given it to him. And he will give me back what he needs me to have to give me the best return here and there. So this young rich ruler stands in front of Jesus and he says to Jesus, he says, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have eternal life, to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said to him with love and compassion, son, and I can imagine that young man listening with an intent ear to listen to hear what he's going to say. And everyone's like pressing in. What is he going to say? You lack one thing. Some of you might be living for Jesus, but you might be lacking that one thing to reach out to the lost and dying world. Yeah, you might be making heaven because Jesus made it where you could, you could get saved and come under that blood and that covenant and you could be saved and go to heaven. But let me tell you, when you are not, I, I said this two weeks ago, when you are not in the center of God's will for your life, there are going to be people that are going to lose out. There are going to be people that are going to lose out on making heaven because you're not in the center of God's will. Shelly, will you come up here and stand? Tammy, will you come up here and stand? Bob, will you come up here and stand? Nate, will you come up here and stand? Steve, will you come up here and stand? Just imagine. Look at these faces. Just imagine if you're not, and I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on you. I'm telling you the truth. I've been to heaven. God showed this to me. Look at these faces. Because when you're not in the center of God's will, someone's going to lose out. Someone's not going to be able to make it because you're not where you're supposed to be. God has a plan for each and every one of us. And the plan is for us to reach out into a lost and dying world and minister to a people that need to hear what we have to say, that need to hear our testimony and the word that comes through us from God out to them through the voice that we have. So look, which one of these would you want to just not be in the center of God's will for? If they were not going to make heaven today, and you need it to line up today, would you line up to the things of God and be sold out to Him so they can make it to heaven? I just wanted you to see some faces. These guys are all going to heaven, thank God. You guys can sit down. Thank you. But this young man, he's intently listening to what Jesus has to say, and he said to him, you lack one thing. I'm going to paraphrase this for you. Take everything you've got and invest it in me because I know how to give you the best return on your investment. Take everything you have and invest it in me, Jesus. And he said, I will be able to give you the best return that you could possibly have. And he was sad, and some people are going to be sad at that because, listen, what he said was people who have possessions. And then he said, again, when he, when he told them, he said, people who trust in their possessions. Not only do they have things, but they trust in those things. And this young man was raised in the knowledge of God because he lived up to the standards all the way up to this point. Now he's asking one more thing. What do I need now? What is that one more thing I need? And Jesus shared it with him. And he left with his head hung low. And I hope that he come back to the realization that Jesus is real. And I really believe he probably did come to the realization that Jesus was who he said he was. And that God needed him to move that way. But he had to go and process it. What do I do? I have such great, I have all this land. I have all these things. I have to get rid of all of them. 
Jesus is not telling you to get rid of everything. He's telling you to give him everything, and he's going to take your everything and invest it and turn it out in a better way than you could ever imagine. Sometimes we lean on our own understanding, and this young man at the moment was leaning on his own understanding, what he had learned in the moment, what he would learned in his life. He leaned on that. He thought, well, at least I'll just lean on what I know. I have money. I have all these things. I'll be able to make it through life. And this is what he said. To the disciples, when he said that, and he said, it, it, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now, I know, I, I've threaded a needle before. That's pretty tough, threading a needle with just thread. And so I have a picture here. So you can imagine their, their thought this time. You can imagine their thought when this guy's crying. He's like, how are you going to get that camel through that needle? That's your Western culture of thinking. That's your Western culture of thinking, getting a camel through a needle. Well, they said, then who could go to heaven? It's impossible then. We're not going to be able to go to heaven. No, what he was talking about, he was talking about this. He was talking about the eye of the needle. This is a small passageway. It's possible to get through it. It's possible for a camel to push through that, but it's going to take some work, and it's going to be a little bit tricky. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the gate that leads to eternal path. Sometimes that narrow way is going to be tricky. Sometimes you're going to have to maneuver. Sometimes you have to get low or get high or squeeze in or suck it in or lose some weight even. Listen, I want to go to the caverns. There's a place I want to go. You got to get in, you got to squeeze down and suck your belly in and climb through. But the reward is there's an open cavern that's, that's as big as a football field inside of that. But you have to get low and squeeze in. I'm going to have to lose some weight to make that one happen. So if I want to do that, I'm going to have to lose some weight. I'm going to have to get in that cavern. But narrow is the way. Sometimes the narrow way is going to be a little tricky and a little tough. But that's okay, because God is God. And if we've invested everything in him, there is a way. Jesus is the way, and the truth, and the life. And no man will be able to come to the Father except through him. No man will be able to make it in to the kingdom of heaven except through Jesus. And I'll read this again. As the angel is stirring the water. And Peter again said to him, verse 28, See, we have left all and followed you. And this is what Jesus is telling Peter. Surely I say to you, He's not saying there is no one. Listen to how this is worded. There is no one who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or child or land or possessions or anything that you can think of that shall not receive a hundred times fold. So if you give back to God everything that's his, he's going to give you back a hundredfold. It doesn't matter what it is. Your relationships, it doesn't matter. When you give it to God, he's going to give you back. So if you're tired of not having joy, if you're tired of struggling in life financially, if you're tired of having a bad relationship, then you're not sold out yet. When you get tired enough of those things that you will sell out and you'll say, God, I just give it to you. I give you my relationship to you. I give you everything to you because I know you're going to give me back a hundredfold. We have to have that mindset. The Western mindset that we have of trying to get a camel through a needle, that impossible mindset, trying to understand the word, the word of God in the way we've been brought up, it's, it's going to be impossible for you to understand the word correctly without knowing Jesus fully, knowing and understand his ways, how he was raised in the culture that he was in, because that's the lingo. That's where they're talking from, that culture. They're not talking from the United States of America and how we were raised. They're talking about the culture there. 
And if we can understand their culture, we can understand the word of God more clearly. That's what Kaneo is about. In-depth Bible study. Learning how baby Jesus was raised. Learning who he was. So then you would understand who you are and who you are in him. And who he is in you. Let's stand. Is there one thing? Is there one thing in your life that you're struggling with? There's one thing that's holding you back. Maybe not holding you back from heaven, but holding you back. It's binding you to the things of this world, to the cares of this world, to the ways of this world, that it's still in your joy, it's still in your relationships with your husbands and wives and your brothers and sisters and moms and dads. See, you can still partake in the things of the world and go to heaven, but when you partake in the things of the world, you're not in the center of God's will unless it's things that he wants you to have and therefore people are losing out you saw the faces and there's 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 a multitude more out there when i was in heaven and i stood before jesus and he said these words to me when he showed me the multitude of people on earth i was dead but I was alive in heaven. He showed me this multitude of people when I asked him if I could live, if I could come back to this place. And I said, who are these multitudes? Who are these people? I had never seen them before. And Jesus said this. These are the ones that would not have made heaven if you would have chose heaven today. There's going to be a people that will not make heaven if you don't sell out today. It's just going to happen. With the, with the babies that are being taken from us, the things that are happening in our government, and all the things that are being stolen from us, the harvest is ready and the labors are few. Why? Because there's not enough people sold out to reach out to the lost and dying world. We have to be sold out to everything, everything, everything we have. Give it to him. If you have something to lay on the altar, come and lay it on the altar. The altar is open now. Come and lay it on the altar because there's one thing. I promise you, every one of you probably have one thing that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with, that you need prayer over. Back up, back up. Get here and back up to one another and pray and watch what God does. Watch how he moves in your life. When you sell out, watch your finances just explode. Watch your relationships come back together. Watch all these things come back together and even a hundredfold on top of that. Because when you invest in him, he will invest in you. And he will give you everything that you want. Anybody want to pray? Just that one thing. Don't hold back. Don't wait on him. Don't wait on someone to move beside you. If God's telling you to move, move. We cannot play games anymore. We gotta move. When he says to move, we have to move. We have to move, guys. We cannot wait to move. This is a move. This is the day. This is the time to move. Miracles are gonna happen when you move. Signs and wonders are gonna happen when you move. There's more. I'm gonna I, listen today. I'm gonna wait because there's more. I, I don't wanna. I don't wanna rush out of here. I'm early anyhow. I don't wanna rush out of here. Some of you guys are living lives that you're struggling and battling every day to find anything in life to give you some kind of joy. Joy. Listen. Joy will be there forever. Happiness is going to come. Happiness is going to go. But joy is going to remain in the midst of being sad in your emotional state. 
joy needs to be there. And when you lose your joy, you've got one thing holding you back, binding you to the world. There's more. Listen, don't wait. I know God's already told you. He's already showed you the one thing. Don't be afraid of what everyone next to you is going to say. These guys are not afraid. Don't be afraid. Listen. The reason I'm calling you to come down here is because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of everyone just doing everything from their seat. Afraid everyone's going to look. Afraid someone's going to look and see what they're doing. Someone's going to look and see how, you know, they're going to wonder and think, wow, what did that guy do? What did that girl do? People are not thinking that right now. Listen, what they're thinking about is their own mind, what's going on in their own mind, what God is telling them to do. Take the brakes off, pull the lever, take the brake off, and roll on down here. God's got something for you, man. Your life's going to change. When you sell out, I promise you, your life's going to change 100%. Your relationships are going to change. They're going to line up. Your children are going to line up. Our kids have to see us being sold out. They have to see that. What are they seeing at home? The fighting, the arguing, all the way to church, even. And then you get here and you clean it all up. You come in with a big smile on your face. It's an avatar. Let's get rid of the avatars. Let's give Jesus everything. There's some more still. Listen, I got eight minutes. There's more. If you guys want to be on time for lunch, you better be getting down here to the altar. There's more. Come on. We can have fun with this. Come. Give him everything. Come. When I sold out and gave Jesus everything, listen. <laughs> Went from four dads to being abused my whole life, to being beat, to being hooked on drugs, to dealing drugs, to law enforcement, to bounty hunting, to pastoring. I died in a car crash. The enemy tried to take me out, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It didn't happen. He can do whatever he wants to do, but he's not going to take my soul. He's not going to take my soul. And I don't want him to take yours either. I want Kevin to come up here for a minute and stand right here, Kevin. He's our photographer. One of our team. You don't get much opportunity. Kevin's been in a lot of pain. So I want my prayer intercessors, my healing prayer intercessory team. It could be all of you. But I need you guys to pray for Kevin. This needs to stop. It needs to stop. The pain needs to stop, Kevin. I believe the Lord wants you to be totally 100% sold out to him, Kevin. Kevin, I feel like that the Lord's saying that you've been you've been mad at God for some things that you've been through. Not understanding some of the stuff. But I want you to forgive him now. Because he's gonna heal you right now. If you've never been in the water, you're gonna get in the water this time. But right now, God's going to touch you. The pain has to leave right now in Jesus' name. It has no authority in your body right now in Jesus' name. It has no authority whatsoever. 
Pain is great when it lets us know something's going on. But when we find out what's going on, it needs to leave. I know that you feel the heat in your body right now. <laughs> I know the pain is leaving right now. <laughs> Give me that. Listen, guys, we can have fun doing this. Yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> He's being touched right now. Listen. Keep this moment. Photoshop this moment, Kevin. Today's the 15th. else need healing this morning come up kids come up and lay your hands right here you guys will learn all about this these kids are like prayer warriors man they like fire comes out of their fingers touch this guy right here ask him first can I put my hands on you make sure you always ask thank you Jesus thank you Jesus for healing Thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for praying. Youth, don't forget about the trip next week. I forgot what time she said to be here. I think at 9.30. Be at the church at 9.30. Don't come late because I don't want to be rolling out and have to wait on you. If you don't have a permission slip, we'll get one to you here. When your parents drop you off, we'll give you that permission slip. Again, greet one another. Love on one another before you go. Thank you guys for being here today. Come back. Invite some friends. Yeah, we need to head count by Wednesday on the youth trip. Anybody can go, so we just need youth to come and, and just enjoy. <laughs>